Tammy Moniz with Faith Surf School Hawaii in front of the Outrigger Waikiki Beach Resort. This is Surfers in Residence where I get the honor and privilege to interview intimately the best surfers in all the world. Hi, my name is Tammy Moniz, and I'm here today at the beautiful Outrigger Waikiki Beach Resort. And today we have a very special guest at Surfers in Residence, um, a Hawaii sweetheart, my sweetheart, and Olympian surfer, Carissa Moore. So happy to have you. <laughs> I'm very excited about all the things we're gonna talk about because I just want, like I get to know you personally and see the beautiful things and the beautiful person you are and see your life and how much work you've done to, to get to this place and celebrate you today. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> well, so much has happened. What's going on? Well, um, we are here sitting looking at beautiful Waikiki and like you mentioned, there's a little bit of a special award dinner tonight and I'm kind of nervous thinking about what I'm going to say, um, <laughs> but I'm very humbled and so honored. It's honestly been such a crazy past couple months and year and season of my life. I'm so grateful. It's been a lot of fun and um, so much has happened. I still like don't think I've woken up from the dream yet. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, life is really good. I, you know, I live in the back of Palolo with my husband and my two dogs and I, all my family is healthy and happy, which yeah. I'm very grateful for. Uh -huh. And yeah, that's, that's about it. Well, what is it like, like, you know, I mean, we, we both love the Duke Hanamoku and we, you know, we, we both are, um, in a, have celebrated the way he has, lived his life and perpetuated surfing in such a beautiful way, you know, in Hawaii where it's the birthplace of surfing. Um, you know, he is someone I have, you know, teaching surfing right here in Waikiki, which you have grown up surfing here as well, right? Did you learn here? Yes, my dad pushed me to my first waves at Queens. So that, how old were you? Um, well, I started off probably how all your kids started off, just tandem surfing with dad. So mm -hmm. I was on the same board with him when I was really manini. Mm -hmm. And then I think I was like five years old when I was on my own board, wow. when he was like pushing me into some ways, probably making people very angry, but they were <laughs> kind enough to let me go. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. You grew up in Hawaii, you're a Hawaiian yourself, you know, and um, grew up in Waikiki and you, you understand what do Kahanamoku meant to all of us as surfers and as you know, people of Hawaii? Like, what, what, how does that affect you being being in this place right now? Of, you know. Yeah, it's um, it's been a really special time because, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up surfing Waikiki and passing by Duke statue almost every day, mm -hmm. and. You, I've heard for years, you know, Duke Kanemoku, the ambassador of Aloha, but what does that really mean? And mm. I was so grateful that, you know, before I left for the Olympics, I got to actually watch an early version of the movie that's coming out about him called The Waterman. And I learned, my eyes were just like totally opened. And I was like, wow, like I had no idea what he had actually done, not only as an Olympic, athlete but as a waterman as a human as an ambassador of aloha he really was just like he was extraordinary and i was yes. so inspired and mm -hmm. it just it couldn't have come at a better time because i felt like i went into the olympics with a bigger sense of purpose mm -hmm. and getting to be a small part of his dream and his story has been just such a humbling experience <laughs> and um, I haven't ever been more proud than like this moment and this season in my life to be Hawaiian and to be able to represent our people on a world stage and bring our sport to so many other eyes that has never seen it before. Um, I mean, it's I wouldn't be where I am today without the community that mm -hmm. has raised me and the love and like people like Duke have, who have paved the way for us, yeah. you know? And so yeah. I hope that this like this moment in time isn't about me it's about everyone who has come before and it's for the future generations to know that like hey like anything is possible even mm -hmm. from a small island in the mm -hmm. middle of the pacific like if you dream big and you work hard and you lead with love you can mm -hmm. do it so um 
yeah, it's it's been a pretty cool time to just like talk about Duke and celebrate him. Yeah. It kind of feels like a rebirth because like yes. his story can get lost at times, but yes. I feel like it's like now like let's talk about him. Let's like let's celebrate him. Let's live the way Duke would live because yeah. the way he lived was extraordinary and it was beautiful. And our world needs more kindness and more yes. empathy and more love. So. Yes. Well, yeah. it takes someone like you. <laughs> to um, not only win a title, but even have the heart and the, the quality to be able to see that and want to elevate that, you know? But you alone will do that and have done that and that you will be in our stories. My stories when I teach all the people how to surf. I, what, it's interesting though, because I do have, all, I've talked about Duke since the time, my first time I taught surf, surfing here. And, um, you know, people kind of recognize the name, you know? But as time went on, they don't even know anything about surfing, like nothing, like anything about surfing, a surf spot, anything, surfboard, anything, you know, <laughs> and they and they they just freeze because they knew absolutely nothing. And right after the Olympics, um, now now you're my you're my little <laughs> talk session, and and it's amazing because once I say, even if they don't know or haven't heard about you, if I say. We have a local girl that grew up right here in Hawaii that just won the Olympic gold medal the first time surfing ever. And they're like, really? Wow. Can you know they're writing down the name and because they want to go and look and they and then everything like, it just it's amazing that how how that has just um, brought so much into surfing and Hawaii and, and you're a perfect person to represent it. You know, it was very beautiful to me watching the Olympics and they were not the normal people in that you were with, yeah. right? Like yeah. you had, can you tell us what that was like? Yeah, so it was very different because yeah. normally when I travel and especially when I go to competitions, I'll have my little support crew, which mm -hmm. includes my husband mm -hmm. or my dad or a coach that I'm working with. Yep. And like with the pandemic and everything, like that was all cut down and we mm -hmm. had to just travel with the team. and. It was like, it was very nerve wracking and very scary and very outside of my comfort zone. But uh -huh. I'm like, hey, you know what? This is it and we gotta just roll with it. This is life. Yeah. And um, you know, sometimes when one door closes, another one opens and there's beauty in everything. And mm -hmm. I was like, what an awesome opportunity that I get to like spend with these people, these this USA team, mm -hmm. we really get to know them and create this like friendship and memories that kind of will last forever. So yes. I, I actually like, got to hang out with Kolohe and John John and Caroline and like th there's are people that we're usually all so focused totally. and like in our own worlds that we don't get to spend that kind of time together but we were like eating and uh -huh. laughing and training together you know and taking naps like uh -huh. no it was it was really cool but it was um it was also like kind of oddly like special for me too because you know I I think I had my confidence it ebbs and flows there's a lot of self-doubt and overthinking all the time and it was like okay well you're kind of on your own now like go and go and do it and figure it out i mean i i can't say i was there by my on my own because i have my dad and my husband were only a phone call away but uh -huh. and brett simpson was the coach and stuff but it just was very different yeah, yeah. i'm sure i could see <laughs> that it's like it, it's like uncomfortable and then you're and you're like well this is it so yeah. right <laughs> but it was so cute because i I'll, I'll never forget one i don't know i think you guys were in the airplane or something and something was going on and laughing and then you had john john or, or even Kolohe filming and then John John laughing and you laughing and I was just like, man, this, you've never seen, I've never seen this before, you know? <laughs> exactly. And it was so beautiful. I just like, I embraced that situation because I think that it's so meaningful t for you guys to be yeah. able to um, really n know each other in that way, you know, embrace that situation together and be Absolutely. a team because we're so individual, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it was just like, it was cool because the Olympics had never happened before, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was a new experience for all of us. And for once we weren't like competing for points and trying to get to a world title. It was like, hey, this is so special. This is like never gonna happen again. This like first time ever yeah. for surfing. So let's like come together, let's enjoy it all. Like, of course, like we all wanna win gold, mm -hmm. but like we're championing, championing this together. Yeah. Like this is, bigger than just us like this is the start of something that hopefully like go on forever in wow. surfing so yeah it was cool well yeah. i mean when did it hit you i think it became very real when we were finally at the airport in california and we were there as a team and we were checking in and we're like oh my gosh we're going because like it was supposed to happen the year before yes. and it got postponed and yes. i was like you know what the olympics may not happen like there's a very good chance it may not happen altogether and so 
like the whole time I just haven't really I hadn't really even thought or let myself get too excited because I knew it could be taken away in like a moment's notice so yeah. when we finally got there I'm like oh my gosh I, we're getting on the plane I can actually get excited now oh that's so cool <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't wait to hear that. So you have the Olympics, you have your five world champions, you know, ship titles. Um, I know that, that this last one was something that you really fought for, huh? It was, well, it was just different because it was the first year the World Surf League had decided to like change the format. So mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't an, um, a year long quest. I mean, it was, but Usually you surf 10 events over the year and it's accumulative points and whoever has the most points out of those 10 events wins the title. But this year they were like after the regular season, they just took the top five to like a showdown that they called it um, at Lower Trestles. And it was literally a one day surf off for, for, the, for the title, which is kind of crazy because with surfing, we all know like you're dealing with mother nature. Um, it can be very random. Yeah. The best surfer doesn't always win. You get the waves or you don't. And so there was like a lot of like, I was hesitant about this mm. final showdown um, because I mean, change and new stuff is always a little scary, but mm -hmm. um, I've never actually won a world title in the water oh. all, up until this point because I've always been on the beach watching my opponent bow oh. out of the contest and then be, you know, by default, I end up winning. Right. So it was the first time that it was like, okay, like it's literally in my hands. I have to go out. I have to control my fears. Ah. I have to control my the pressure and the anxiety. And I actually have to put that all aside and focus and like surf for this. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose. So it was there was a lot. There's a lot of feelings and emotion going into that one day. Who was there to celebrate with you? Was that different it, doing that? Did you like it? Um, I think it was exciting for everyone involved. Like mm. lo now looking back, I think the fans really enjoyed it. Like uh -huh. at least the energy I felt from the beach and all of the feedback I got from afterwards, everyone really enjoyed it. And I, as a surfing fan, loved watching it. Like wow. I liked watching the matchups. Not. And, and being in it was cool too. Like it was, it definitely, I think it was a moment where you're like kind of sometimes pushed up against a wall and you have to like dig deep and mm -hmm. find that strength. And um, I like those moments because you know, you, you just see what you're made of, so. Wow, so <laughs> I, I don't like those moments. <laughs> Um, but so what do you do like when you're you're like kind of nervous like what are the what are those negative feelings you feel and then what do you do to transfer over like well um, I'm definitely trying to work more on finding that freedom um, to mm. surf from a place of freedom because it's turning that anxiousness and pressure into something that's like positive that can really fuel you instead of like bring you down and um, hurt your performance so I was really trying to focus on freedom that last day and just remind myself, okay, let go, just go out and surf. It's literally like it's what we do every day except in a 30 minute time frame and you're wearing a jersey. So mm -hmm. just simplify, right? And Tatiana Weston Webb, um, she ended up coming and meeting me in the finals and she is a force to be reckoned yes. with. <laughs> she is an aggressive competitor and surfer all around. Like I knew it was gonna be tough and mm -hmm. she ended up winning the first out of three. And mm -hmm. so that was like literally my back up against the wall moment. Like, okay, like I, if I don't step up and change the momentum of this thing, I'm yes. gonna lose the world title. Mm -hmm. Everything I've worked for for a year, I'm gonna lose it. It was like, that. those are the, the feelings. Like that's just the weight of that thought. Right. It's like, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> and then of course there's like, you know, all those self doubt overthinking like, oh my gosh, can I do this? Did I do enough? Like, you're not good enough. You can't do this. Like all that wow. stuff comes back. And, and you usually have like, maybe a day to overcome those feelings. And we had like 35 minutes before right. we had to paddle back out. So I think it was just taking a couple deep breaths. I think tuning in with my team, my dad was there, my coach Mitch Ross and my husband Luke. And I think surrounding yourself with good people, with love. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what really helps to like ground me and helps mm -hmm. me to move forward is that love because no matter what happens, you're okay. That That's like something you can always count on mm -hmm. is love. So. Um, so what did dad say? What did what or you know, what was that one? Did anyone say something that really hit you that you needed to hear at that moment? Well, my dad said, hey, Riss, like we've trained for this moment. We've done this. We've ran heats. You got this. Like, you know how to wipe it off, go back out and do it. You got it, you know? And I'm like, OK, yeah, dad's right. That's all I need to hear. <laughs> and then my coach Mitch was he was like helping me just simplify the lineup and giving me a few like tactical things to focus on. Mm -hmm. And he was waxing my board. And then Luke, you know, 
my husband, he just grabbed me and looked me in my eyes with like tears in his eyes. And I could feel like the love just by that. And he was like, hey, if anyone can do this, you can, hun. Like oh. he was crying. Um, and yeah, that was, that was all I needed. Your dad was a swimmer, right? Mm -hmm. And he had coaches and he took that and applied that to surfing, right? Yeah. How do you think that helped you as a, you know, athlete, top athlete? Oh, I undoubtedly wouldn't be where I am today without my dad. And he, yeah, he was a competitive ocean water swimmer. Mm -hmm. And I always like to tell the story that he was like one of the first people to body surf waves in in the ocean water races. And that got him ahead and to, to he ended up winning the, the Waikiki rough water swim three times. Wow. And he kind of started that. He started that yeah. whole idea of like, okay, like getting a wave in because then you know, it gets you that much ahead of your competition. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, he even says, I mean, I didn't, don't remember him swimming and competing much, but he's like, hey, I wasn't the most talented swimmer, but I was smart mm -hmm. and I thought outside the box. And I always thought that that was one of the things that really contributed to my career is mm -hmm. I had my dad as my ace. He was constantly like, okay, what can we do? How can we do this better? Mm -hmm. How can we be more efficient? And he really instilled in me how great work ethic and mm -hmm. how to use my time wisely and to make goals and mm -hmm. um, just how to like, just to keep striving, to keep pushing, to mm -hmm. never settle. And I'm, you know, happy to say that dad and I are still on the journey together. It's mm -hmm. morphing and it's evolving and changing, mm -hmm. but like there's nobody I'd rather share this with than him. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, was, it's really special to watch that. And, you know, we watch the good times and there's also times when you came in mad and, you know, he made us said something that you didn't like and you stormed away in the car, oh, you yeah. know, like. I mean, it's not perfect, right? you know, it's imperfectly perfect. Um, it's, it's tough because I think people probably see those moments, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, we definitely push each other's buttons, mm -hmm. but he knows what I need better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And even if no one else gets it, we yep. get it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think we're finally getting to a space. I mean, I'm finally 29 years <laughs> later, uh, learning how to communicate and let each other cool down and then actually talk about stuff. Um, but yeah, like having a parent daughter, like coaching relationship, it's like, it's tough, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. That's good. That's good. It's, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, you know, for, for you, but it also takes a lot from him, you know, oh, to be absolutely. effective. Yeah. Totally. What is your greatest memory, you know, um, with him, you know? Ooh. Um, I've had some great memories with my dad. Um, it's funny because I want to, like, recall on some, like, big win and him being right there. Mm -hmm. But, like, one of the most beautiful things about my dad is that he's never the one to like ask for any credit. You'll, he'll always be kind of in the background. Uh, like I remember my first world title, I won in France and I'm like, where's dad? And he was like walking up and down to the hotel room trying to like just cool down. And he was just happy to like watch. I couldn't find him, but he was in the crowd somewhere. But I think my best memories are like, honestly, just surfing like Diamond Head or Lighthouse Aww. with my dad on like a no wind, Kona wind day. And it's just glassy and it's just us out and the Aww. waves are fun. and. I called him the other day. I'm like, Dad, I miss you. Come home. Let's like, let's go surf together. I just want to go surfing with you and like chat on the way to the beach. Aww. Like, that's what I cherish the most. I don't know if you guys know, but Carissa, when she was growing up, she would surf the girls' divisions, and then she won them all the time. So she started wanting to surf the boys' division. So she would surf with the boys. They weren't that happy all the time, you know, because I had to surf with her. And I think you won a few, huh? I did okay in a few of them. I can't, like, that was not me. Like, I was not a let's go serve against boys. Yeah. That was a dad. That was, that was dad. a dad uh -huh. thing. But that was smart. But it was very smart. Yes. And it definitely shaped me into uh -huh. the athlete and person I am. So I'm very grateful he, he did that. Yeah. And a, another thing that I, you know, because your family is so important to you, you know, it's like your hub, yeah? It's always been Absolutely. your grounding hub. Um, but you and your, your sister have such a bond and I, I think that you attribute a lot to, you know, who she is and, and I think she would say the same thing, but because I've watched you also take that big sister role in her life and, and really love on her, you know, deeply. You want to share a little bit? She's another one that like, you know, family is everything and I wouldn't be here without her support. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, like dad and I were off and if it wasn't for Kayla being okay with that and being supportive, Mm -hmm. and being loving like that wouldn't have been that dynamic wouldn't have been possible so she was always super unconditional with like 
letting me go, letting dad mm-hmm. support me and mm-hmm. being there when we got back. And she's, she's always been that constant mm-hmm. and we have a lot of fun together. It's been really cool watching her like blossom into yeah. the woman that she is. Mm-hmm. And she's like, working for the World Surf League and she has a great business of her own where uh-huh. she's starting some, you know, Luana loungewear. And uh-huh. she's also actually, she's working on competing for Miss Hawaii in yeah. the end of January. So, so that's good. really exciting for her. Yeah, that's really good. And she's a really good surfer. Really good. She's really she's good. She's incredible. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave that out. She's won several national titles and she's just super graceful and beautiful. Mm-hmm. I don't think she totally loved the competing world, mm-hmm. but if you put her there, she would probably show up and blow up. So what is on the, like, what's on the horizon? Like, what is it like to be here now? You're an Olympic gold medalist. Like, what is, what is that like from now? Like, what does your what, do, what what are some things you have to do or whatever? I don't I don't know honestly. I'm still trying to figure that out. I I mean, I think I'm definitely gonna try to I'm gonna surf for as long as I can. Mm-hmm. Probably until I'm in the ground. I I probably won't compete for the rest of my life, but I'll do it as long as I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And um, I just I mean I'd love to be a mom one day. Mm-hmm. I've been getting. Definitely a little bit jealous watching Kalia and Joe, um, you know, start their family. That just looks so much fun. And I know Luke, he, if he could, he would have started a family yesterday. <laughs> um, so I definitely want to be a mom. And I just like, I have a passion for, for, I don't know, just loving on people. And mm-hmm. um, I started my nonprofit more Aloha a few yes. years ago. So that's something that I'd love to like dive even more into and mm-hmm. see that grow. And Share share with us what what that is because I you just had a really um, an event right and was it in California yeah that seems so much fun thank you yeah. I want to do one here I, yeah. it's it's been kind of a busy year and um, we actually so we put on two events one in California and Florida and I it's the whole idea is more lo- more love and it's just in using surfing as a platform to bring girls together mm-hmm. to really share inspire and encourage each other and just to be good people mm-hmm. um you know to help them chase their dreams and step outside their comfort zone and feel more comfortable in their own skin and, and by doing that i think they'll be able to love more than on themselves and then give more love yes too. absolutely i mean and you're such a great inspiration of that you know um i i um it's just beautiful to watch, you know, growing up is, is a challenge, you know, and let alone growing up and having a profession at such a young age and growing into this woman that you are, you know, it's like, it's so, it's so, um, it's such a reward on this side to watch that happen, you know, and you. so excited for you. I'm just gonna I'll constantly cheer you <laughs> on and I'd love to see not just surfing, but your whole life, you know, has been rewarding to watch. Um, you know, so thank you for coming and um, spending this time with me. And it just felt like me and you were in the room alone. Yeah. And um, it was good to catch up and to see you right here in front of me in your flesh and to, you know, congratulate you for your amazing win. Thank and you. can't wait to see the rest of your life. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for having me. And like you said, it's just, it's nice to sit down and talk with you, just a friend and auntie. and. You're like family, and, and I really I say that in like the most genuine form because mm-hmm. I really feel like um, my family goes beyond just blood. It's the mm-hmm. people that I've spent my life with, and mm-hmm. you're one of those people. Your family has been so close um, to me and played a huge role in my life. So thank you. Oh, I love you so love much. You too. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Tammy, and this is Carissa, and we say aloha to you.